Hi, I'm Ken Planchard, and I'm responsible for Capital Projects Pursuits, and specifically, how do we help our customers incorporate digitalization initiatives into their projects? So today, we're going to talk about specifically, how do we make this happen on a capital project? So the first step is to determine your vision and your end game. Just how autonomous or automated or digital do you want to be? So if we look at the, the spectrum of what's available, we can start out with the way we've done things in the past with manual paper forms and passing data back and forth between disciplines and workers manually. Or we can look at what we start to see today, which is islands of automation, where we may have operations systems such as a DCS talking to other systems and passing data automatically. If we look at the next level up, that would be a connected plant, which is where you start to get vertical integration. So you may have some operational systems data being transferred into some of your business systems. And then we have a, a predictive plant, which would be like an enterprise integration. So we're looking at the way the plant's running today. How can we make it run better? And how can we predict uh, different scenarios that may happen so that we avoid them or make them make it work better? And then lastly, we have full enterprise value chain integration. So we're looking at not just individual plants, but how do we operate all of your plants together to meet your contractual obligations and maybe to optimize supply chain? Because there's so many different applications and data types out there, it may seem like a daunting task to pull all this together and determine what it is that you want to do. So we break it down into five different areas. So the second step is to look at each one of these areas individually and then look at the data use cases and determine how you want to transfer that data back and forth by grouping in order to simplify the process. So the first grouping is around the business systems. So that would be looking at enterprise integration, uh, supply chain integration, real-time analytics. Uh, what type of KPIs do you want to have and how visible do you want to make them? Where does the data come from? Is it from a business system or from someplace else? Uh, the second area we would look at would be around reliability and maintenance. So how do you identify maintenance needs? Do you do it manually through operator rounds or through emails? Or do you want to have online condition monitoring of equipment so that you can generate automated alerts and send them up to your computerized maintenance management systems? Uh, the third area that we'd look at would be production. So how do we optimize production and make our operators more efficient and make the plant more efficient? So there's a lot of technology advances today that you can incorporate there. The fourth area would be around safety, which is the obvious one. And then lastly, we talk about the workforce and some of the trends that are out there for mobile worker and digitalization of the workforce so that they can access data in the field as opposed to having going back and forth between the field and the office. So an example of a data flow if we take all of those different data models and use cases and we combine them together into one, might look like something we have here on the screen. So this is an example from an LNG terminal where we look at terminal scheduling, production control, mass balances, operations management, and so forth. And we've combined all those different data models and use cases into one. So the third step then, now that we've got our data models figured out, is to determine what digitalization considerations we need to have in the project in order to make it all come together and to meet those goals and visions that you set in the first step. Okay, so the starting out with a smart foundation, putting in a smart DCS and a smart field so that you can access all that data and you know that it's reliable and it's accurate. Uh, the next would be to incorporate safety functionality, uh, look at the operational performance, and uh, just to, to point out a few things, like APC, Advanced Process Control, that's been around for decades. There's a lot of new advances in how it can adapt and, and modify the algorithms you know, in a closed loop fashion without operator intervention. So would you want to consider some of that type of stuff? Designing for reliability is around making sure that the equipment is available when you need it. Okay? Uh, we talked about digitally enabled field workers. Uh, one of the new trends is around digital twins. And how do we not just use the digital twin during the operations of the facility, but during the capital project? So we can use it for testing the process design, for testing control algorithms, you know, obviously for training workers before the process is started up. But there's other things you can do in process safety management design and in testing out SIF functions or safety functions. One of the things that's really important is integrating all these different applications to make sure that data transfers back and forth. So the infrastructure, the networks, if you're going to use Wi-Fi, how are you going to get that data in and move it around in a secure fashion? And then lastly, is how do you access data in an efficient manner 
So if you set up an asset-centric database using modern database structures, then you can click on a piece of equipment and you can pull up process history, you can pull up trends, you can pull up mean time between failure reports, uh, root cause failure analysis, data sheets, all different types of data, all with one click of a button, whether it's static data or it's uh, dynamic data. So our complete implementation process is really four steps. Uh, the first is aligning to your business strategies. So if you've got operational excellence initiatives or if you've got digitalization strategies or automation or operation strategies, maintenance strategies, how do we incorporate that into the project? And we want to align that with the project strategy because sometimes they have different goals. Projects are worried about schedule and risk and cost. So sometimes those conflict with operation strategies. So we want to make sure we have alignment around that. And the best way to do that is through philosophies. So when we set a vision and we sit down and we say, this is what we want to accomplish, which we already talked about, it's documenting that vision. We call that a philosophy document. So that's around the data strategy, around operations and maintenance and so forth. Those documents then are used during the front end engineering and design to determine your system's requirements, the data flow requirements, and the specifics of how you're going to accomplish those goals. Those documents are then used during detailed design uh, for configuration, testing, integration, and then you've got go live, training, and deployment. So if you enjoyed this video, I'd encourage you to watch the other ones that we have in this series. The first one would be around data management concepts and trends, and then the second would be around uh, technology enablers and how do we use technology to achieve our digitalization goals. If you'd like more information, you can always contact your local Emerson representative.